Hello everyone, welcome back to James's Minecraft journal. And we are somewhere different today. For the last, like, three months we've been working on the city. But I am over by the farming area that has all of one farm in it. But still, it's an area that uh, I hope to work on in future. I wouldn't say it's something I really, really, really want to do like the city is. Uh, this is just something else. Um, we can work on it in our own time at our own speed. Uh, the reason I'm over here is because I was live streaming uh, last night, last night being the 7th of July, and I was working on this. Now if you remember, we built this uh, a while ago. Um, it's an automatic brewing uh, system. So basically you choose what potion you want, you click it, click whatever secondaries you want, and then uh, it brews it for you. I had problems, and there was also a bug in the game. The bug meant the glass bottles couldn't go from this hopper here into the brewing stand after the system was reset. Okay, that's been fixed, so that now works. But then I had two other issues. Two pieces of nether wart was getting passed into the system uh, after each take, and that would all, all obviously back the system up, so the blaze powder or whatever other ingredient was above it couldn't go in and continue the process because there was already a piece of nether wart there, uh, an extra piece I should say. Um, I fixed that very very simply, I fixed it on stream. This line here, this line of redstone is pointless. Basically there's a memory system which stores the data of what button I pressed, what ingredients should be passing through the system on each pass. Basically there's a pulse that goes through the memory system and that detects what ingredients need to be put into the brewing stand uh, and in doing that it also puts a piece of nether wart into the system as well. I completely forgot about that and added another piece of, uh, well another redstone line that goes this way and that was doing exactly the same thing so it was a, it was completely my doing no redstone bug whatsoever. This is actually useless so we can get rid of it now. Another problem was there was two glass bottles getting sent through uh, instead of one. That was not actually a bug, that was I that was a fault by me yesterday because I was changing the wiring and I forgot to put a delay or no I didn't know why there was a delay there in, on this repeater so I didn't bother putting one and as a result bottles were getting let through that weren't like when the system was refilling a, a water bottle would just go straight through the brewing stand without getting collected, without getting held up to become part of the process, so yeah, that was that was another issue, but overall, we've got it working. So as you can see, we've put all the ingredients into the proper places up there, which is good, so that means we can brew any potion, so we might as well try it. I got rid of the start button, I also discovered the start button wasn't necessary, and that the system just starts on its own after you uh, press what ingredients you want. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do here. As you can see, as you can see, I brewed a lot of uh, strength <laughs> while I was testing this. Um, so we've got a lot of strength, which is good. Let's do something a bit different. Let's do... We don't have any rabbit's foot, so we can't do leaping. We'll do, I guess, hmm, fire resistance. So we'll do fire resistance. We'll do fire resistance extended. And we'll do... No, we won't do splash. We'll just do... Actually, yeah, let's do splash. Got that in there. And then we've got all that in the correct order. Wait, glowstone went in? Two glowstone went in. Right, well, this is part of the, the debug process. Now, basically, the system starts when some uh, the piece of netherwork passes through that hopper there. It will activate that comparator, and that will start off a chain reaction. And that's the amount of time I've got to select my ingredients and uh, basically that will, uh, once that runs down, the bottles will be let from here into there. It's very, very sloppy. There's way better ways of doing it. Let's see, we've got the nether wart, we've got the magma cream, we've got, we should have the redstone. And then, yeah, glowstone's got let in. Keep our eyes open. Right, yeah, it pulsed twice. It pulsed from both. Now, why was that? Yeah, both pulsed there as well. Um, apologies for this, I didn't intend to spend this long here, I just really want to get this sorted. Let's have a look then, the memory system. Oh, oh I see, so the memory system has somehow been informed that 
glowstone should be up as well. The fact the memory system indicated that glowstone was to be sent through on each pass suggests that the problem lies here. Right. Right, so it's clear the signal passes through here and then it goes to these two uh, repeaters as well. Hmm. Okay, so we've located the issue. The issue should, well, hopefully it's the only issue, but the only time they conflict is back here. And it's weird that, well, I did fire resistance and it never sent through healing or uh, gas tears. Whatever it was I did over here, poison sent through both. I think I've worked it out. I think I've worked out why fire resistance didn't uh, send multiple items through and uh, poison dead. I think it's because as you can see fire resistance doesn't have doesn't have to go through a block to get to this repeater whereas uh, poison does. Okay so I think I figured it out. Uh, <laughs> I had uh, I had one of Spodder's videos on in the background so that was uh, that was nice to uh, keep me sane as I was working through this problem. Uh, basically, um, well, I've sorted it all now. Well, I think I've sorted it. I've not tested it yet. That's the next stage. So basically, we had a line of repeaters here, alternating direction. Um, this repeater here... Like, so imagine there's a repeater here. We did poison. We pressed poison last time for the example for the test so that would go through that repeater and then it would go to the repeater here and that would send power to this block and then because there was redstone dust on either side of this block they would get powered and so that would mean they would activate as well and on the way back it was basically the same um, so the poison line is here uh, the redstone repeater would point into the block and send power to the redstone here and that would uh, just make problems even worse as it powered the redstone either side of it again. So this time I've tried to avoid putting redstone dust either side of these blocks. I have had to, I mean, not much, but I have had to alter things slightly. It should work. I say it should because I don't know for sure. I'm not confident in my ability. Right, let's have a look. Poison. We'll do poison again. Jeez, oh, we did it. Right. But the problem is, or the, the next thing we need to explore is whether or not it all resets after the first pass. So we're on to the last ingredient. Uh, this should reset soon. Uh, that'll get let out, that's fine. Then we should get nether wart and come on, sugar, spider eye, fermented spider eye. That's not good. I've discovered the issue. Uh, as you can see, We've got redstone repeater here pointing into this block. It's bound to power those two uh, things over there. So, what we need to do is stop the system. Just so we don't waste any more materials. And we need to figure out how on earth we're going to sort this out. Basically, we had repeaters on this block here and redstone dust on this block here. Uh, I've just swapped them over and that should work. It just means there's less repeaters in one row than there is in another and I don't think there's any need for uh, any repeaters along this line of redstone either which is good. But yeah we've got so much delay on uh, every second one which might conflict with the ordering or the, the ingredients have to into the system in. Oh, we're just going to give it a go, I reckon. I don't think the delay should be too bad. If worse comes to worse, we can just add another delay on the uh, the other sides. In fact, we might do that. Okay, so we've got some more bottles in the system. Um, let's try it. So we'll have to do poison again. We've been doing poison every time. Okay, so I decided not to include the results of that test because it was a bit long, drawn out, and uh, it wasn't very clear. Basically, what happened was uh, I pressed the poison button. That was fine. Uh, the right ingredients, nether wart and spider eye, got put into the system in the proper order on the first take, but not the second. Uh, on the second take, only the spider eye was present. And I was editing the video there, and this was a problem even before I changed all this. But as you can see, this line of redstone comes from the memory system. 
and that goes to the spider eye. It's also supposed to activate the line of redstone that goes to the nether wart, but that's not possible, and it wasn't even possible with the original design, because the original design had a repeater here facing the wrong way, so the power would go through the block, and it wouldn't activate the, uh, the nether wart, which is possibly why I had that original uh, line of redstone over here that I took out at the start. Uh, you might remember that was something I thought I didn't need, but apparently I did for some of them, but not all of them. And it obviously doesn't work now because this piece of redstone here will not power the redstone line below this block. So, uh, I've not tested this yet, but to compromise or to fix the issue, I have put a line of redstone here, which will only be powered by half the torches. And the group of torches that will power it are the ones that coincide with the... Uh, line of redstone here that goes to, well, poison and every second one which won't power the original line of redstone that goes to the nether wart. But this one will. And that's how we're going to fix it. Uh, we don't need to do it for other ones because they will naturally just feed into the line of redstone that goes to the nether wart, but these ones do need this extra line. So that's what we've got here. That goes all the way down here to the well, the dropper. I've been saying it should work for the last, like, five hours, and it's not. Um, well, let's just give it a try, shall we? Final ingredient, which means that should be starting to activate. Yep, we should get the nether wart and the spider eye this time. Please. Nether wart. Spider eye. It was quite slow, to be fair. But... It doesn't matter because we've got a long line of repeaters there to give us time, to give the ingredients time to go into the system. And so, with that, we should be able to just sit here and fill up this chest full of poison pots. While this works, this is only one combination of ingredients. Think of how many combinations we have, uh, including the secondaries and all that. What this means is this one combination does work, uh, but we're going to have to test every single other combination. Uh, except for the leaping because we don't have the right ingredients. Uh, so we'll have to, I'll do that off camera, um, but I need to test each and every one, make sure it works, and then we can declare it officially working, and then we can work on the interface and the room. But yeah, bit of an accomplishment, I'm very happy with that. So now we're back in the city. Last episode we finished uh, the building of just about all the structures here. Uh, we might edit one or two, like the tower obviously, I'm probably going to get round to uh, finishing that off and just making it look better. I might change the size, shape. I might change a lot about that, but with everything else, I'm fairly happy with how it looks, how it is. Uh, we've not done too much work inside the buildings. There are one or two that we've worked on, but uh, not all of them. So we've got still got a long way to go. My aim for this episode is to uh, move or start the process of moving into the warehouse. For those that don't know, my regular base is not good for performance. Uh, it's not good for computer performance. It's, I mean, that's partly my fault. The new storage room I built with all the chests and that, that just, yeah, that, that wasn't a good idea. But the, uh, the other part of it isn't so good. So, um, I'm going to move in here. It's less laggy here. And we are going to just set up the storage room here. I might actually change these windows because I wanted to put something here. Or I, I guess I could put it elsewhere. Um, but yeah, this is where the storage room is going to go. And then I might have a bed in here. Or I might just shove a bed in one of these houses here. Uh, as you can see, I've kind of set up in this house. Back at base, we've got the main storage room at the top. And then the lower storage room. We're not going to have that lower storage room. Uh, we might have overflow storage up top. But I don't want to have too many chests here. Um, I just want enough and we're still going to use the main, the main base. There's a few farms there that require, well, obviously all farms there require the player to be in the vicinity for them to work. Um, and that will still be the case because we will have the fish farm. And if we want the farms to work, we can just go and fish farm and the farms will work. So we've got obsidian here. Uh, what I'm going to do is set up a portal. I was planning to put the portal here, but that would cover the windows. So we're going to have the walkway here. I'm not sure what blocks we should use. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe spruce and cobble. Oh, we've kind of got spruce already on the ceiling. That might not look so... or but not on the ceiling on the, for the roof. How about we use oak wood instead? Because I feel that would go more with this build. It's not really a dark build, is it? It's, 
it's just uh well a lighter build. We do have oak at the front here, but that's okay. I think uh, yeah, I like spruce. Uh, not spruce. Oak. I like oak. Uh, let's add some more, and then right at the end we'll have staircases up. So that's the layout I've got so far. I like the staircases. Not so sure about the floor. Um, I just went for. I like the oak wood, but the cobble at the side I'm not so sure about. Um, but that's okay, we can change that later if need be. Uh, what I wanted to do now is insert a nether portal. I was going to do it under the stairs, but unfortunately that's going to prove a little more challenging. I would like it somewhere that's accessible, uh, if you know what I mean. So I don't want it to be upstairs because I would have to run upstairs. This nether portal is going to be our way back to the like our base. Uh, if we were... If this was at the other side of the city, then I probably wouldn't bother. But because this is at the other side of the city, we've got to run double the distance to get back to uh, our main base, which is by spawn. Uh, it's probably worth our time using a, a nether portal. So that's what we've got for the nether portal. It doesn't look so great, but as I said, I think it's better to go there than anywhere else. And it does kind of cover the window. And we're going to link this portal up with a nether. First of all, we should take the coordinates. Alright, 1638, so minus 16, minus 38 is where we need to put the portal. I'm hoping that this room is big enough for us to fit it into the wall at least. But we're going to have to just wait and see. So 1638, minus 16, minus 38. So we need to go this way, and this... Wait, which way? This way, yeah. So this way, minus 16, minus 38. So minus 16 is here, right here. Minus 38 is just down here, so we're going to have to build another tunnel. Exciting times. Oh uh, yeah, let's take that off as well. Okay, so right here. This is where the portal is to go. Uh, let's clear out all this. Alright, uh, let's go and see if this links up correctly. Hey, it did. Excellent. So that's good. That is the first part completed. Let's just go through to make sure uh, it works going back the way. Yes, it most certainly does. And first we're facing the wrong way, but I mean, that's okay. So that's that part done. Uh, next, we want to be uh, implementing the chests. Now, my idea is we'll use the next floor. I, d I did say we wouldn't have much overflow storage, but I think the next floor, the upper floor, will be a place where we can add some more chests if need be. Um, so we'll need to think about that. Not sure what we'll do for that floor because obviously that the whatever we put on that floor will probably be the ceiling of this floor, the lower floor, the ground floor. Um, and then down here we'll obviously have to put the chests. So we're by the base again, the regular base. Uh, what I want to do now... How'd your wee sheep? <laughs> uh, we're going to try and build a way down, a quick way down, to get to the larger storage room. Uh, reason being, I need to walk all the way down here. Now, obviously I did build this room with the intent, or not this room, but this hallway here with the intention of linking up that room and the storage room, and that's all good and well, but sometimes you just want a quick way down here. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, so, this is the prime spot for the exit, the entrance and the exit. Um, we just need to get rid of all that and we'll just dig in here and we'll get the coordinates and we'll see where that coincides with on the surface. Okay, so yeah, it coincides with this block here which is, yeah, not going to fly. Uh, I'd, I'd rather not dig up the path around spawn to get a quick way to the storage room. Okay, so my plan, uh, I've changed my plan several times, but I think what I'm going to do is use, I think this was a block here, that coincides with the area that leads into the storage room. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use this block here, and I need a sign for this, and then I think we're going to just have the water there because we need that for the sugarcane farm, but then we're going to dig straight down. So, I'm just adding some stone as the main block. Oh, hello. And that way we can cover up places like this. Although if I ever come through this cave again, I might accidentally dig through, although that doesn't really matter. It's not like we're going to uh, disrupt anything. And here we are. So as you can see, a perfect, perfect drop to here. And now obviously, there's several ways we could get back up. 
we could just use the elytra which works fairly well as you can see so it's quite simple really all you do is in fact we could put a trap door over there although i think that would just not look good so the thing is that even if we fall in we can save ourselves by swimming um, although if we don't then we're just going to fall right through um, but yeah we're going to put a one of these over there's the water drop so let's test this water drop Yep, all good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another portal just in here. And what that's going to do is obviously allow us to... Uh, well, it's going to take us to the nether hub and we can just go back in the portal to get to the main base. Or we can go into the other portal to get to the city, the one that we built earlier. So yeah, there we go. It's kind of a weird shape. For symmetry's sake, we should do that. And we can decorate this another time, but the portal is there. Let's test it. There we go. Lots of lag. And then if we go back through, it should just take us to uh, the main base. Yep, took us here. That's good. Okay. So that will do it for this episode, I think. We have accomplished a lot. I just want to thank everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you when I see you.